Hello everyone, recently I got a lot of questions about my PCBs, mostly through uh, messages. Someone even joined the, my Patreon just to message me, and uh, you don't have to do that. Uh, you can just do that, contact me on Discord if you wish, but... Uh, anyway, the most of the questions I received are about the ADX L345 MCU, as you might expect, and uh, I'll get to that. And uh, yeah, a lot of the questions are about selling your own, which I'll also get to, but the summary of it is you can do that. There's nothing preventing you from doing that. I took that as a sign to redo a lot of the readmes and stuff like that on the repository, so now it is easier to navigate, easier to figure out what's going on, and actually stuff is in the correct folders now. There was a mistake of that as well, where the V0 breakout board, some of its parts were in the ADX L345 MCU folder, and the, you know, stuff like that, but yeah, everything is uh, hopefully fixed now. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go over the PCBs I have very quickly and then uh, I'll talk a bit more on about the ADX L345 MCU and I'll get to selling your own and I'll also have a question that I want to ask as well when I get to that. But uh, yeah, let's just start with the V2 breakout PCBs. They are what they sound like. It's this set of boards. At least these are the revision 2. So, this is basically a way you can connect everything using a DB15, a DB9 and the 17W2 uh, connectors. Using those you can run everything up to this board in the, uh, in the electronics chamber and run everything to this from the SKRs or whatever else you have there. And uh, yeah, it's just a breakout system, it's uh, nothing too complicated and yeah, well, most the rest of my PCBs are like that as well, except the ADX L345 MCU. But uh, yeah, this, uh, not this one, but uh, yeah, these PCBs are for that. And I use them on my Boron 2 mode series, so if you're interested in that, you can check that out. And there is also this uh, PCB I'm doing there right now. This is for the Doom Cube, and that's a replacement to this PCB. I went into more detail about that in that video, but. Uh, yeah, once this is tested, this will also be released there, so you'll have the both both of the options if you wish. And uh, moving on, there's the Voron Zero breakout PCB, which is uh, basically the same idea, but obviously it's much, much smaller. Again, this is in my Voron Zero videos this time. And this sits on the tool head, and again, it's just a breakout. And again, I went to, into more detail in that video. But uh, this is on the toolhead side. I don't uh, currently have a separate board for the electronics side. I am going to, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to release it or not because uh, that design uses a Chinese SSR, and uh, really, I don't want to be responsible for you know someone's house fire or whatever. So I am taking my precautions, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. I'll think about it. But uh, this is released, this is tested and it works just fine. And you can use this board on the electronics chamber if you wish. And uh, it will serve the same purpose, it just won't be the separate board. Which is actually good for you because, well, you usually have to order multiple PCBs from a PCB manufacturer. So this will give you the opportunity to use two of them. So you can use it as a breakout on the electronics chamber as well. Since it's basically a simple connection, it should still work the same way. And it is the Voron Zero breakout PCB. And then there is the PT100 step stick adapter. I don't think I have that on EZDA right now, but what it is is it adapts the MAX31865 modules, the PT100 SPI interfaces, to a step stick slot, just like a Ray's PT100 stick, which has the components on the PCB itself. This was like an in-between design. This lets you use one of the off-the-shelf Max Word 1A65 modules and just slot it into a Step 6 slot. So it, it doesn't have any electronics on it. It just has the two legs for the Step 6 slot and one leg that's going to the uh, Max Word 1A65. Back when I designed that, the PT100 stick wasn't easily available. You had to order it. Uh, from a PCB manufacturer and probably have it SMD assembled as well, especially if you're as bad at it as I am. But at the same time, the Max 31A65 was basically out of stock everywhere, so the only way to get them was buying those modules anyway, and you had to desolder them, etc. It was a huge pain, so 
when I designed it, I think it was a good idea, but right now you can buy the BT100 sticks easily on AliExpress, so uh, I don't really see a big point on using this. But uh, that being said, it works. So if you have those modules and if you want uh, technically a cheaper option, it still is cheaper, uh, you can get that manufactured from your PCB manufacturer, your favorite one. And uh, yeah, that should do the job for you. And then there is the ADX L345 MCU, which is uh, this board. This is the only board I designed with electronics on it. Uh, overall, this was meant to be a relatively, because nothing is cheap if you have them custom SMD assembled, but a relatively cheap option that's also easy to use. At that, you connect the ADX L345 to the your clipper setup very easily using a USB-C connector. I went with USB-C, which I kind of regret because it is. I went with a true hole version because uh, JLC PCB, at least at the time, I don't know right now, didn't do any connector assembly even with SMT. So uh, I went with true hole, and with true hole, there for USB C your options are limited. So I probably should have went with a just a mini or micro, but I don't like those, and I went with this. But uh, yeah, it makes the sourcing difficult. So so uh, yeah, keep that in mind. But uh, other than that. It's still available on DigiKey, and um, yeah, I explained this PCB in more detail in videos about that. So if you want more information, you can check that out. But again, this is the only PCB that I have with electronic components on it. And back when I designed this and I ordered it, the whole thing cost me twenty-two dollars for two assembled PCBs, so eleven dollars each. I think that was reasonable, you know, add a dollar or two for the ADXL345 and another dollar for the USB connector, the whole thing costs you $15, which, yeah, it is a premium, but, you know, it's not that much, especially for the convenience. And, uh, yeah, I really like this design for easily connecting ADXL345 to your clipper and doing the resonance testing, removing it and putting in a drawer until you have to do it again or you can move it to a different printer and go on like that. Though uh, right now there is a problem with this and that is the semiconductor shortage. So uh, remember I said this thing cost me $22 for two. Well if I order it today for two again it costs $56 so $28 each. And uh, at the ADX L345 and USB connector uh, yeah, you're looking at probably over $30 per module, so uh, it's not cheap at the moment, and as I said, that's due to the semiconductor shortage. So, uh, yeah, for example, if you want to see the biggest offender there, it's this STM32F103. If we look at it, it costs me 367 per. That page doesn't show per, it shows the extended price, so let's go with that, 7.35 for two of them. Right now, for two of them, it's $32, or almost $33, and that is the biggest offender with the price, but basically everything's price increased. So, for example, these capacitors, it's now $3, and uh, it was $224, which, uh, yeah, it isn't as drastic of a change, but if you look at the percentage, it's still a pretty significant increase, and, uh, you know, let's just grab another expensive part just for comparison I'm sure there is something oh yeah the crystal 643 right now what was it back then uh, 474 so uh, yeah the prices definitely went up and and uh, with the way things are going right now with the semiconductor shortage, if you follow the PC industry, you know, graphics cards and stuff like that, you probably have an idea. Uh, this is not going to improve anytime soon, so uh, yeah, this kind of turned into a premium product just because of the market. But, you know, if you are willing to pay for the convenience, it's still an option. And I have all the files you need to order it from uh, JLC PCB on this folder, ADX L345. So the Gerber, the pick and place, and the bomb. And uh, you will need a few more things like the USB C and then ADX L345 module. Everything is linked here. 
but uh, yeah, it is a premium option at this moment and uh, probably for a while too. Now the few people that reached out to me, they were uh, basically interested in selling my boards and I gave them the same answer and that is the projects on this repository are licensed under GPL v3 which means you can do that you can basically do really anything as long as you credit the project and uh, if you, as long as you don't also uh, claim that I endorse that sale if you are selling my board don't even bother contacting me I'm not going to advertise for you but uh, yeah as long as you uh, credit the project as long as uh, if you modify the project you license it under the same license and still give credit and uh, that, that's basically the only limit uh, as long as you do all that uh, there is nothing preventing you from doing whatever you want including commercial uses but uh, if you want more details definitely check the GPL v3 uh, license the license file on my github page and that has the more correct information. This is just uh, me summarizing and I might be skipping over some details. But all of those people reaching out to me made me realize that there is a demand for this uh, product. Like there is a demand for people buying this uh, assembled and ready to go. So uh, yeah, that made me think about maybe selling it myself. And uh, even if I do that, you can continue to sell on your own, by the way, that's not going to prevent anything. But uh, yeah, I'm, this is just something uh, that crossed my mind. This is not uh, a sure thing and most likely isn't going to happen. But still, I want your opinion on that. If you, if I sold these PCBs, would you be interested in buying one? Even if you say yes, it doesn't mean that I will actually start selling it. It's just, uh, you know, it's a thought experiment at this point, but maybe it will lead to that. Now uh, I just talked about the uh, prices, so uh, it's not going to be cheap and that's just the uh, production cost, there is import taxes, there is shipping costs etc. So I'm not giving you a number right now and I'm definitely not going to have a big profit on it, probably very little in fact, because the, my aim would be to just get this out to as many people as I can. But uh yeah you know you set your expectations realistically there is import taxes there is shipping costs etc but uh yeah if you are interested in this let me know in the comments below but uh yeah that's kind of it for this video i just wanted to highlight this uh, repository as i release more uh, pcbs for the existing projects and for more projects this will be updated Random PCBs might not sound like the best name for the repository, I, I mean that doesn't sound great but it is basically what it is, uh, PCBs I designed for uh, random projects. So far they're all for the Vorons but uh, maybe there will be other, other stuff in the future as well and even if there aren't, they all serve different purposes so they are random so you know it still works. And uh, yeah I'll link this in the description below if you're interested in that. And uh, as I said, that's it for this video, so I hope you found this video interesting, and thanks for watching.